Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to build from exactly where we left off last time. We we're able to make a server. We we're able to see that server um, display some simple HTML. And we went over how the Go code works, whatever the details were. In this video, we're going to go ahead and deploy this code. It'll be cool to actually see this code running on some different server that the whole world gets access to. All right, so I'm just going to quickly run this command, this go run main.go again, just to kind of make sure everything's up and running. I will enable my firewall. It's listening on port 8080, so let me open up a browser. All right, here we have a browser. If we go to localhost 8080, we'll get exactly what we want. Now it's called anonymous. If we just use a little bit of the functionality we added, remember we if we go to the base endpoint, so the slash endpoint and give a query parameter like whatever name you want, let's say JSON, it should update and have JSON and the today's dates as well as time. Sweet, we're gonna deploy this on Compute Engine, so Google Compute Engine. Now for those who are not familiar with what Google Compute Engine is or Google Cloud, I would highly suggest watching my other videos on GCE. But in short, um, GCE is this platform where Google provides you with a server and you do pretty much whatever you want with it. You can I mean, select the type of OS, you can select the, I mean, the number of CPUs, the RAM, the networking, all this pretty cool stuff. And you can deploy applications on it and run batch jobs, servers, whatever it is you want to do. Um, you get all that functionality handed to you. And if you haven't created a project yet, um, I highly recommend that. So let's jump into it. So I'm at my typical project, Martin's project. I'm just going to go to the side counter. You might have to scroll down a little bit because I've pinned mine already. Let's go to Compute Engine and we'll go to VM Instances. Now I already have an instance running, but we'll go ahead and create a new one. I will click Create Instances and let's give it a name. Let's call it Server Instance or My Server. Actually, let's call it My Server. Um, select a region. Typically, you'd want to select a region that's closest to you. Um, usually the closest ones to me are in Belgium. Um, machine type, we're not really going to change that, but you can go ahead and create pretty massive machines. I mean, this is overkill, right? 96 CPUs, that's a bit too much. Let's see how much that will cost. I don't do not have that kind of money unless you guys start subscribing. Man, I am broke. All right, let's the next thing. Let's select the boot disk and the operating system. So right now it's a Debian, which I think I'm pretty OK with using. But you have CentOS, CoreOS, Ubuntu, container optimized uh, operating systems, which are pretty much just run Docker. Um, more on that in future videos, Red Hat, all these other ones. You can even use Windows and some stuff for uh, deep learning, whatever it is. Let's just cancel and leave it as is as a simple Debian one. Now, a little tip for you guys who are just jumping in the first time. You might see this price tag and be like, oh, this is pretty expensive. But one, this is per month. So that's how much you're going to be paying every hour. It's up. And if you want to further go ahead and reduce costs, let's go to this management section and I'll scroll down to the availability, availability policy section. And there's a section called preemptability. Now, preemptability just says Google's like, hey, listen, we're going to cut costs quite a bit for your VM, but it will only last a max of 24 hours. Google will not delete it. They'll just stop it from running. So you'll always have it um, available. And that drops our cost down to $8. So we're paying way, way, way less um, hourly. And especially if you're towing around like we are just playing around, um, we don't need to be paying a lot of money up front, right? Let's just drop our costs um, as much as possible. All right, let's go ahead and create this VM. Uh, my server, let's give it a, a few moments. It should create. All right, sweet. Our server is now up in that particular zone. What we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to jump in an SSH. Now, there are different ways in which you can connect this instance. We're just going to use a simple one by pressing SSH. So this might open a new tab or it may just open a, um, a little terminal within the same browser. Sweet. That was pretty fast. Let's jump in. OK, now within this particular server, two things to note. If you move the screen a little bit, one, this server has an external IP address of 34, 76, 57, 37. This is how we're going to be able to connect to our, um, our instance abroad or from remotely. So let's say I'm at home here. This external IP address is what we're going to use to connect to our instance. Let's make sure our server can run Go. So if I type Go version or just Go, it says Go is not, not command that's found. Let's quickly install Go. All right, so, um, let's scroll up here. Download Go. And since we're using Linux, let's use this particular um, uh, bin. What I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this uh, link, copy it, link address. I'm going to go back to my virtual machine and do a wget. And just paste that link here. And bam, yes, you saw it. 122 megabytes in literally 0.8 seconds. Yes, Google's network is blindingly fast. Here we have the binary. Let's just follow some simple instructions. It's uh, tar. I'm just going to type this out. It might be faster. User local that go 
So it's going to unzip. Clearly, I need to sudo. Sudo that. So that's going to send all the contents of this file into that directory. The reason I have to do sudo is because this is part of the root directory that we don't, by default, have permissions to. Next, we're going to export this path. Bam. And I think that should be it, right? Let's try and go. Sweet. Go is installed. You can do go version. I think this is 1.12. Yes. Nice. All right, sweet. We now have go installed. So at this point, we need to figure out how we're going to get our code from our local machine here all the way to our Google Cloud um, server. So first things first, let's create a directory in which we can actually upload our code to. Um, so keeping with Go convention, let's just uh, create a Go path. I'll do a make there minus P. So the minus P just simply says, hey, listen, if there's no parent, I'll, I'll go ahead and create a parent. So you're free to create as many subdirectors. Or you're free to go ahead and make as many subdirectors as you actually want. Because the parents will be taken care of for you. So let's do Go. Oops, just Go source. Um, github.com you can put your name here i'm going to use my handle martin Burr jr and let's call it our simple server sweet so that that directory has been made underneath this go path so the many ways in which you can uh, get files from your local host to your machine what i'm going to go ahead and do is just something simple um, you can use scp so secure copy you can use um, gcloud scp or you can be simple and use this functionality that ha that's inbuilt within this uh, browser and upload a file. So the quickest way to do this is we're gonna go ahead and zip this file over here and then upload it here. So I'm gonna open this directory. So let's do a right click, um, reveal and explore. And so that's where this is located. I'm just gonna right click there. Um, so you just go send to zip folder. Nice. So once we do that, let's go back to our, let's minimize this, open up our little server inside here upload a file and let's browse to that particular directory. So I'm just going to copy this over here, and jump into this new window that's open, select that, open, and you'll see this little uh, browser open, this little browser window open, I'll wait for it to upload and we'll continue from there. I'm going to maximize the screen now. Let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see. So if you do an ls, that's where it is. Our zip file is now over here. Let's do an uh, unzip. Let me check if unzip is, nope, it's not installed. Let's do a sudo apt update and a sudo apt install minus y unzip. Sweet, let's try it out. Yes, cool. So let's unzip this directory building and we can use the minus d flag and now points to our go source github.com server all right that looks good let's awesome we have all our files here and i mean there's really nothing left to do rather than run it so go run main.go that's a little good sign remember in the last video we, we said it's important to print some stuff to know it's working that's good to know now it's not really easy or trivial for us to check if this is working what we can do is we can go ahead and i'm going to minimize this and minimize that we can come here and use the external IP address. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open a browser. Let's move this to the side. I'm going to open a browser window. And I'm going to copy this IP address. 34.76.57.37 and open up port 8080. Now this should not work because by default within Google's network, um, the only ports that are allowed by default are 80 for um, TCP sorry for HTTP and 443 for um, HTTPS. So this should not work. As you can see, it's just connecting, 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 connecting. Nothing really much is happening. And that's because it's trying to establish a connection with that and bam, site can be reached. So in order to make this work, we need to do a little bit of magic with our firewall rules. So let's click this little icon. Let's scroll down to VPC networks. We'll come to firewall rules and we're gonna go to our default allow HTTP. And now actually let's create a new firewall rule because I don't want to mess with this one. Let's create a new firewall rule. Give it a name. Let's say um, my server um, HTTP firewall. The whole point here is I'll uh, we'll leave it on the, on the default network because I don't think I've made any new network. 
um, targets all instances in the network. That's fine. IP ranges. All right. So our source IP address, we really want it to be the internet, right? We want to be able to access. Um, so incoming messages, the source can be anybody from the internet, right? Or you can put your own IP address. Just granted, it doesn't change. So 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 is really just saying anybody with an IP address can be able to connect to this, which pretty much means it's not going to be so secure. And here we're going to specify the ports. Remember, now it's 8080. All right. Let's create this firewall rule. All right, so here's our firewall rule that we just created. And this applies to pretty much every server. Um, it's important to delete this after we're done. Um, so just remember to do that. So let's go check it out. If we come back here and we try again, um, the server is still running on port 8080. If we open that, hey, what do you know? Our server is now running all the way in Belgium. I'm sitting here in Cape Town and um, yeah, we get everything we want. We are now using the IP address and we've exposed this port 8080 and we're getting the beautiful picture. Welcome anonymous. Let's um, put my name there just to make it a bit more personal. Martin, bam, and it works, right? April 25th, it's not really six, it's pretty late here, it's like 8, 8 p.m. Um, yeah, all right guys. That's been how to upload your or deploy your application to um, to Compute Engine. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I will try and do another video. And so there's so many different ways in which you can deploy your apps to different um, components of Google Cloud. I mean, this App Engine, Kubernetes Engine. Um, I mean, even Cloud Storage, if it's a simple app that's static, you know, you can do whatever you want. There's so many different ways to do it. Um, I think in the next video, we're going to look at App Engine as well as Kubernetes Engine and just kind of get into that flow. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, quickly before we leave, before I leave you guys and leave you guys with an exposed um, uh, port, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is show you guys how to um, close everything off. We're gonna go ahead and delete this firewall rule. Let's delete that. And if you guys want more information on how firewalls, firewall, firewall rules work, um, I made a video on that, so check that. Um, um, it's part of like my Google Cloud Networking VPC video section. So check that out. Um, let's delete that and make sure it's gone. Um, you will not be able to access your server again, and that's a good thing because you don't want people accessing your server and doing some crazy stuff on it, right? Next, let's go back to our VM instances. And let's terminate this virtual machine, right? Let's stop it. Um, if you don't want to use it again, I'd highly recommend deleting it. If you want to pop it up again, just stop it, and then you have to do the whole firewall thing again. Let's just, uh, let's delete it. I don't think I'm going to use it again. Now, this will also delete the boot disk my server. That's a good thing because otherwise you just still incur costs for that boot disk. Um, let's click delete and you should be good to go. So